Hello, hello. It's d and Dave, and I'm here with Peter Donker. How's it going, Peter? Hello, David. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. We're in a heat wave over here, so it's uh, it's quite brutal outside. We've got our AC on. I mean, that's something you don't know too much about over in uh, Switzerland land, right? Don't don't have no ACs. Don't need them. Uh, temperature never gets uh, above 28-ish. Uh, degrees up here i'll let you figure out how much that is in uh, now you're talking it's, it's like three uh, three thousand yeah. <laughs> three thousand degrees fahrenheit i don't know <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so true I, I figured you would make a joke about ac being alternating current instead of air conditioning yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that too <laughs> oh man well it's good to see you um yep. we wanted to yeah. get together today and and chat a little bit about a subject that's uh near and dear to your heart and um i I know a bit of history in this area has been it's been a little bit kind of kind of crazy evolving to this state but you know you've had this vision if you will of the developer experience as it relates to dnm platform being actually usable now we would all love to have an f5 experience right (laughs) but you know what is this? This is kind of our first step exactly. towards that, right? So, so tell me a little bit about the history of this and what your, but you know, kind yeah. of what your vision is. I think I think it, um, it it goes back to a uh, a conference uh, a while ago uh, that happened years ago when uh, Scott Hanselman showed up to our conference, mm. and I had the pleasure to walk him for fifteen minutes from the hotel to to a to a dinner. Thank you for that. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You remember, you remember that episode. I do. Yeah. And um, at that point in time, he, uh, um, let's say, he explained his experiences trying to build DNN in the run-up to the conference. He's, you know, he delved into the project to prepare himself for uh, for the keynote. And he explained to me that, um, you know, it, it didn't work at all. It was um, a <laughs> horrible product, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I was... Uh, although taken aback, I mean, uh, you know, any feedback is fine, and and so I I hear him out, and of course his experiences are always valid uh, from his point of view. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and at one point he he mentions something like, well, you know, I I cloned the repo, hit F five, and then just red squiggly lines and everything, and just everything <laughs> blew up. <laughs> and of course, you, me, any other DNN familiar person was like you don't build dnn like that at all like no one <laughs> who does that who, who expects to download that huge repository just hit f5 and things do work like <laughs> what what kind of world do you expect this to be so um uh that was actually i, I would say the start of this whole uh of, of this whole odyssey hmm. since then um uh you know I, my path has been towards hit f5 to run this thing now i totally understand that is not feasible for many intricate reasons it also has to do with how visual studio operates how our whole project is organized and everything yeah. um however i i do feel we owe it to the community to be as close as we can get to that experience so um it did uh, because it provoked a number of discussions, of course, behind the scenes, where I was explaining my own experience and and also uh, um, you know uh, Scott's reaction to the project. At that time, uh, the project was still controlled by Dean and Corp, um, and I didn't get any traction to make things easier. Dean and Corp had their own internal build processes that were not public mm-hmm. at all. We we just basically sat at the sidelines of a factory, and sometimes you know things fell off, and, and we're like, oh, well, well, we can play with this, and but none of it really kind of intuitively fit together or it worked well, and. Uh, it, it did feel for a long time like we were cut off from this part of the project. So um, fast forward uh, to 2018, the project goes goes back into the hands of the community. And uh, pretty soon I was uh, uh, with a couple of other people also driving behind the scenes to improve this. First of all, we needed to actually be able to build it. That was already just like a shitload of work so i mean let's pause together. there for just a second because like you, you know i feel like we're scathing over one one little 
bit there. I mean, yeah. you kind of just kind of nonchalantly just mentioned, you know, <laughs> when, 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 when the community got our hands on it, right. You know, so like right. that really kind of was a catalyst for you to say, Oh, wait, I've had this vision for a long time, but I haven't been able to do anything. Right. And now exactly. you're, it's starting to morph into a state where you can actually impact the positive change. Right. Well, exactly. I mean, it, the whole point of course, getting it, into the community means that finally we get to do stuff and yeah. one of the first things that we needed to do was solve this like it had to be able to be run by just anyone not uh, you know two or three people on the planet who actually have their <laughs> pc set up and the right configuration and everything magic. and made wave the magic wand <laughs> exactly yes. but it had to, it had to be for uh for mere mortals it had to be possible to clone the repo <laughs> and actually get the damn thing running on your own development PC. Indeed. So, uh, yeah. and, and, and for a long time, um, I, I have to say, I don't, I don't want to play the victim role here, but for a long time, <laughs> I, I, I did get confronted with a lot of skepticism, like, oh man, it's just like, it's so complex. Just, you know, ah, forget, you know, anyway. Uh, well, it, we, it we is a mature progress. platform, right? And it is not easy uh, in nope. many regards. Uh, so, no, no, you know, your things. vision is a, you know, it's not a trivial <laughs> <laughs> undertaking. No, right? It so. was, it was definitely not a, tri it, it was definitely not a trivial undertaking and there have been struggles, uh, uh, on, on this path to get to the point where we are today. I, no, I seem to remember still, I, a few times, uh, Peter, uh, <laughs> yeah. where some, you know, choice explicitives or, you know, came out of your yeah. mouth when you were trying to do some things that should have been easy. Right. So, and we, we've, exactly. we've all been there to have tried, you know, to, I, to be, I remember my own frustrations. Yep. Exactly. When you discover certain parts of the platform are actually being built uh, for instance, and uh, are, are, are just basically the old stuff being shipped into the platform every time. And you're like, guys, we, we need to absolutely nail the build process. It needs to be uh, uh, good enough so, so that it can run locally and everything. So, you know, I, I've always approached this from the angle of, um, you know, my own perspective of as a developer, like what would I want the platform uh, to be like? Uh, downloading and so I have four personas right four personas that I presented for building the first one is the most obvious one is the people like you and me working on the platform and trying to improve it uh, day to day for us it needs to be of course a good experience um, testing out changes that we make to the platform the second persona is the the extension developer uh, module developer, right? Who um, who wants to know what the hell is happening in the platform when uh, he or she's like, okay, well, you know, I, I have this weird bug and I'd like to trace it into the the platform. It, that was not easy to do, right? Um, there is another persona of um, developers who uh, create entire solutions and might actually tweak the platform in some way or mm -hmm. uh, kind of bundle it and stuff they also need to be able to delve into the code um, and see it run Absolutely. and yeah exactly and so uh, uh, you know and the fourth persona is actually the let's say that a hidden persona but that's the actual the continuous integration that we have going right so uh, yes. uh there's a there's an automated process that every time there's a change to the platform it kicks off and it builds the entire platform so those are only to work like you, you need to be able to uh to build the platform for all those uh, four personas and we were only focusing on the last one Right. And mm, the so first true. one was kind of implicit, like, well, if you're in this inner circle, you will know how to do this. <laughs> and, <laughs> Magic. And, and, and two and three were like, well, we've got the symbol files. So what are we worried about? And, you know, if they're really motivated, they'll <laughs> delve in and they'll learn how to how to do this. So uh, and, and then um, uh, what is the setup flavor of the week? 
right? You know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. How, and and uh, people just exchanging ideas, right? The conference was going like, really, you do it, you do it this way? Uh, like, oh you no, 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 you shouldn't be doing that. Things over doing... to another directory. Uh, what? <laughs> it's it, it, that, that those kind of things are disheartening. So, um, I would say that or a crucial. Uh, part of, of of the progress has been the um, adoption of a technology called Cake, Cake Build. Um, it, it's it's uh, uh, basically a C sharp scripting language to uh, to build to control build processes. Um, this allows us to craft uh, our build code in a language that we can all understand. All of us speak C sharp. So, so we can understand what's going on and you can easily extend it with your own libraries. We've done that. I've created a DNN cake build uh, library that is on uh, NuGet and they, it's on GitHub as well uh, if you want to see the code. Um, and so we can, we can offload a lot of stuff into cake build. I think that was one very crucial uh, thing that, that, that kind of unblocked uh, progress um, and the other was to integrate as many repos as we could into one and in other words to go down the route of the mono repo I mean if you want to search the web about opinions for this <laughs> you search for the web for for the term mono repo and you will see lots of discussions lots of discussions with people who believe in either mono repos or not and uh, okay so we went down the route of mono repo meaning the entire uh, admin experience uh, came into the platform and from that moment on uh, we had uh, a hybrid very much a hybrid build process so uh, yeah just to I mean meaning, just to quickly interject yeah. on that like whenever you're talking about the admin experience you're talking about the persona bar right uh, for, yes. for you know or that 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 when I'm logged in as an administrator the experience that flies yeah. out right and, yeah. and and this is a good good point to talk about. Well, it wasn't a separate repo. And one of the reasons yeah. is because it has a completely different build process. It's a completely different tech stack, well, right? You know, it and was, it was, uh, let, let's 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 move through there, there were three things actually. So there was uh, the core platform, if you like. There was the the, uh, the 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 admin experience. It was called Persona Bar, the admin experience. And there was the React Common Library. And mm, yes. they were all meant to be somewhat independent of each other, and hence they found themselves in, in different places. Now, um, the problem was that when you actually start to test, build and test code, you want to be able to make changes in whatever part of that chain and then have the complete thing run in front of you to see the change that you're doing, right? So mm. uh, let's say you're making a tweak to um, to a certain setting in the platform, you want that setting to be visible in the persona bar experience, so you can play with it, and you can say, "Well, I'm going to make a you know a text field to edit that." Or in the persona bar experience, you want to change the dropdown. You've got to go to the React Common Library, change the way the dropdown works, and see it uh, propagate into the into uh, the the admin experience. So those interdependencies were very, um, uh, of of course, were very evident. In the in in the platform as a user, and as a developer, you want to you want to see that run, and it, it it was it was sheer impossible to coordinate locally on your dev machine three repos in that way yeah. because wow. you needed to fake out npm to have npm point on your local drive to the React Common Library, and then you needed to be pretty funky with the version numbering to make sure that that was actually picked up, etc., uh, under the covers. Uh, dealing with webpack and the uh, yeah all this stuff. I have, exactly exactly there, there is it, it was a can of worms it was and really heaven forbid of... if you had to make a change and i remember you specifically ranting no. about this quite a bit when you had a change that yes it was in the ui of the persona bar but you needed yeah. to manipulate something in platform for it to interact with oh yeah. That was a nightmare uh, uh, in of itself to just be able to do that, right? And to test it, it out. Oh, my okay. gosh. 
and, 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 a, and a total complete nightmare plus in terms of versioning um those four personas have different uh desires in terms of mm. versioning as well and that was something that was long overlooked i believe by the people who are involved at, at, at the at the heart of this project uh and and this part of it um which is that continuous integration needs a safe solid way to move versioning forward so we will never screw up our versioning in the product yeah i completely yeah, understand yeah. that so so that has a separate kind of versioning technology then for instance the dev or the um uh the the extension developer or the core developer who says well actually i want to try out i, I just saw a bug in the platform of this version so i want to build this version and put that dll that i just compiled into a, for instance a live site where i change a little bit of code to see if that actually has made a change yeah and and both you and I know that if you screw up the version there, you'll blow up the site. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so you want complete and total control over the version at that point, right? You don't want some funky process to kind of control the versioning for you at that point. It's like no, no, I I need exactly this number because otherwise that site will blow up. Yeah. So. Um, I th I think this is where uh, um, you can see how complex uh these things can can get and especially when you're when you when you have so many moving parts in the platform and of course in, the, in terms of the i mean the the, the, the admin experience was already hybrid build process yep. uh, when it was integrated the the entire project was a hybrid build process meaning we have uh, a c-sharp compilation uh part and we have a webpack part yeah, and uh, especially in the latter, we made a huge cleanup uh, by going full mono repo and getting all the node modules together, etc. Uh, mm -hmm. Going with Yarn workspaces, Lerna, etc. There's a bunch, it's a ton of work that's happened there. <laughs> Um, I specifically went through all of the uh, the the MS build. Uh, stuff I, I hate MS build with a passion but you know <laughs> we're just married to this so <laughs> it is what I, it I, is right <laughs> I, it is what it is I do understand it and I, I went with a comb through everything and I managed or at least I tried as much to simplify that and all gather everything that was build related into a single folder now at the root saying build you know in the in the repo there's build and everything build related should be there that, that's one of my pet peeves like i remember uh, should be there I, I remember digging into the ms build stuff for a platform a while back you know and i remember counting the number of files that related to ms build and i just stopped and buried my head in disgust <laughs> when i got to a certain number i was like this is ridiculous i've already lost my place five times trying to go through it yeah. right and, and and obviously also the thing that really triggers any uh, any developer like like you and I uh, uh, with uh, with just even minor OCDs is the fact that you get complication. Like when you see that happening everywhere, it's like oh they've got the same block happening here. You've got the same thing happening there. <laughs> yeah. Like no friggin' wonder we, it's so hard to uh, build because yeah, one yeah. of them is out of sync with the rest and everything just breaks. So <laughs> exactly. Uh, it needed a thorough, thorough cleaning. So, so anyway, long to yeah. short, that was done, right? Yeah. And uh, at that point in time, uh, Cake became the central director for uh, for actually uh, managing the build process, and um, and then uh, yeah, started to get questions. Of course, like how do you even do this, right? Uh, which brings us to the core subject of, well, this video series that I did. So that, that's perfect segue. <laughs> so, I mean, we've discussed the pain and, and yeah. people that are watching this and are not aware of all this. I mean, there's much more. We could probably talk for weeks, you know, honestly, about the pain, uh, things that have been gone through. But, you know, it, it, it was a good summary of some of the major pain points and kind of the driver for you. So then COVID, right, happens. Yep. And exactly. we're isolated, right? And Peter is sitting around, 
you know, dreaming of what he could be doing <laughs> during this time, right? And you, you come up with the brilliant idea of, well, we don't have great documentation on, on exactly what this is, so why don't I create a video series? So I'm going to switch over and let you, uh, you know, at least at a high level, kind of walk yep. through what you were thinking with all this and, and, and really yep. just kind of break it up for people a little bit without going into a whole lot of detail here, you know, of what the different right. main parts are. So exactly. So, so, so the thing for me um, that is important and, and what I wanted to get across uh, to people uh, and, and for which a, a blog post is, is, is just not verbose enough. And and not uh, like like it's not the right format in, in my opinion. I love watching five minute clips on technology that explain something, just one little thing for me to understand. Yeah, me yep. um, and so uh, I said, okay, I'm I'm going to break this down into several parts that I would like someone to be able to uh, to internalize, and. Uh, funnily enough, I do start with just making people familiar, first of all, with the code, right? So uh, uh, when you open up DNN in Visual Studio, what are you looking at? Like, how do you, that, that, it's one of the first things if you download a, a new project from somewhere is you first got to orient yourself. Right, yeah, you, you you have no you have no map. You just stand there going like, okay, well, um, I see this, I see that, I see that. What does it all mean? So I'm trying to kind of uh, do that in the first part, just get it familiarized. Um, uh, what you know, how the code is organized, and then in the second part and the third part, and uh, I delve into the two core build technologies, right? So MS Build and Webpack. And I explain how, uh, especially with the MS Build, because there's still quite a bit of distributed stuff um, in MS Build. You can't completely put all MS Build scripts into that build folder. Right. Like every project still has an MS Build uh, file sitting next to it where the settings are stored for that particular project. Um, and then it points up into the root and goes to the build uh, uh, files in the, in the in the build folder. So I explained that in part two. Part three is about Webpack, how now with uh, with Yarn Workspaces and Learner, etc., that's organized. Um, and do I also... Okay, no, that's in, in, in seven. I will actually show how that it will work, right? When you, when yeah. you actually change uh, something in one of those React projects. Um, and so four is... Uh, cake, I I I love cake in multiple ways, and uh, this one is uh, uh, you know we we created a, quite a few uh, cake scripts, and one of them is to help you set up and reinitialize um, a a dev site locally. So so once you've set it all up and you've tweaked things, you will run just one command from uh, from PowerShell. And your whole site is reset to whatever you've just got checked out in code. Mm. Uh, and I and I do this the, on a is this like the daily basis. Is this like the first time, really? I mean, I was trying to remember back history of early days. Uh, I remember us having closer to this experience. Of course, it wasn't as complicated then because we didn't have you know the whole persona bar thing. Uh, but this is probably the best local development is, experience we've ever had really since the days of everything just being in all visual yeah you know, visual studio uh, right. I, I, uh, c sharp stuff right I, yeah i would i would argue that that is as close as we can get to hitting f5 right yeah. so yeah. uh it's one command and you just sit back and the site will actually be created you can bring it up you can work with it and when you hit build on um on your visual studio it will copy the the DLLs, your 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 debug DLLs into that site, and mm. and it can be anywhere on the on your hard disk. So ah, that's it, great. It, it's, you can tweak it. Like okay, this is where it, how how we'll work together. The only thing is, I do expect that you have a local SQL uh, running, local right. SQL server right. running. That's that's my setup basically, and you have a local IIS running, uh, and then you 
you know, you're off. You're off to the races. You can you can do this. Yeah, and, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like you know, one of the things that I uh, picked up when I was going through this because I've always wanted to just have one instance of DNN set up right. locally for the purpose yeah. of developing DNN stuff. Well, now exactly. I can have that, and yep. I can blow it up and start it over anytime I want to using the process that's been put together. It's really really fantastic. Right. Right, because because it takes on my machine something like I think four minutes to do a complete reset of that site, um, and uh, so that's a complete build, complete really rebuild quick. of the local dev site. <laughs> so so well, I mean, it's, it, exactly. I mean, it's short enough to say, oh, I'm going to work on this branch because we're, for instance, now we're uh, working with that file manager, new file manager we're working yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and I would sometimes, you know, get a comment like, "Hey, um, can you, you know, work on this part?" And I say, "Okay, I, I have some time. Uh, I'll check out the branch, reset my dev site, and I'm off. Off, uh, you know, I'm good to go. I, uh, of course, check in the, um, you know, get from Git, uh, pull the latest uh, changes in, reset dev site, and we're off." Yeah. Um, so that and, and part five is about creating that development site on your local machine, right? Which is, you know, have IAS and have SQL running locally. And all of, you know, the rest all is explained in here. Um, and then six and seven are indeed about changing code. So uh, the two parts, because it's a hybrid solution, uh, I, <laughs> I don't use Visual Studio ever to edit JavaScript or React code or whatever. Yeah, like exactly. uh, that, that for me is just that seems like, silly, right? so <laughs> <laughs> that seems silly, right? It's, it's the wrong yeah. tool for the job, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, so you change tooling as well, right? So you, you, for, yeah. for six, of course, for visual studio, uh, for sorry, for the C sharp code, you're in visual studio, right? For the ASCXs, for the razor files and everything, you're in visual studio, tweaking that, etc. You hit build in debug mode, that should copy over to wherever the site is. Um, for the React code, you open up Visual Studio Code or any other code editor, you've got a, um, uh, a watch task running on, on your code and it will copy that code also to, to the server, uh, to your local dev site. So I found it anyway uh, uh, to be good enough for me to start actually developing on on DNN, and it actually worked with the damned React common library that we <laughs> had, right? So that that was yeah. that was really hard to well, solve. I mean, we well, one of the things, to solve that. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it 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 actually works fantastic, um, and I. I feel like it's probably going to be fairly stable to this. So I think your videos are going to last for a while uh, and be relevant. Uh, be there nice. may be some small tweaks here and there, but you know, for anybody that really is interested in, you know, either contributing or at least, you know, just getting it up and running locally so that you can really explore the code and, and, and do it. I, I would recommend that you go through every single one of these videos. They're not long. I believe the longest yep. one here is about you no know, part five here. Um, and, oh, yeah. but it's still not long. It's less than 15 minutes for that. And most of them, you know, five or six minutes or, or less. Um, but there are bits and p pieces in some of the earlier ones that are, not re-explained later on and with good reason but you know you do want to be familiar with all of this so i would just i mean i sat down and did it all at once and i've watched them several yeah. times and i found it fantastic um I, really when it comes down to it uh you only have two custom files in essence locally that are settings yeah. kind of files that help you configure your local environment and telling this build process what to do with the output and uh it works really really good so so what, so what i've yeah what i've done now and that might become a part eight at some point in time is uh, i also played around with puppeteer a little bit i don't know if you know that technology yeah, yeah. Uh, basically you have a local chrome uh running uh, within node and so it can fire it up and as a browser and then uh, you can control it 
through jQuery like selectors and say, okay, click here and then fill in that, etc. And um, basically, I created a, a a super script on top of all of this that not only resets the dev site, but then goes to it and logs in or it just you know spins up the site, uh, so it's already installed, um, logs in and. Uh, adds a ton of users as well and uh, and and roles uh, so that when I just go to the site I know I don't need to start filling it with stuff first we should come back uh, and do another uh, video on that specifically I remember when you showed that to me I was super excited yeah. about it because we could go through and actually write you know test scripts in a very organized and simple way right uh, to be able to test out certain you know key areas in in the platform that really needs consistent testing on yeah and that and that so, so there's a com combination of of technologies i also use a local uh powershell library for dnn there that's also on github that could be the subject of yet another um uh presentation but uh, the the thing is this so we, we get all these these parts uh, and, and once you get them tweaked and tuned so now I said before, the build process like four and a half minutes. So in five minutes, actually, I not only have that site up, but I have it, uh, you know, logged in, et cetera. And with, uh, with a hundred users, uh, there and, and, and ready to go. That's, that's phenomenal. I, I believe that this is probably one of the under most understated, uh, resources that people have out here right now. And, uh, so, please, you know, take time, uh, yeah. look through these, you, you know, the, the, it's really well done. And Peter, you did a great job of articulating things in a quick fashion there. So be sure to check out Thank Peter you. on YouTube. Stay at home yeah. DNNer. Fantastic. That's, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's me. I really appreciate you taking the time and walking through this, Peter, because uh, we need to get the word out about these. And, you know, well, we could use a lot of new contributors yeah. uh, uh, to DNN, a lot of traction and everything. But I think if people had these resources in their hand, they would be less intimidated uh, to jump in and, and work on a specific area of interest. Yeah, yeah, certainly, certainly. I hope so. I hope it helps some people. Great. Well, I know we're heading into uh, holiday time for you. So I, I hope you yeah. uh, enjoy your holiday. Thanks for taking the time out to Thank do you. this beforehand. And uh, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Thank you very much.